What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Weekly Review, where I give my thoughts and opinions on the current state of the markets. And as always, I'm going to go over last week's price action, as well as what's to come in the future. For these market reviews, I'll always go over stock indices, bonds, and currencies. And without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we're looking at the weekly chart for the S&P. Like I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, we will stay bullish. We are not picking a top in this market. If I zoom out, You'll see we are at all time highs. So when you are in a market condition like this, you want to refrain from picking in high. So if you are going to short, it has to be very short lived. It has to only be scalps. If you're trying to short in this market, don't expect any shorts to hold for multiple days, weeks, whatever the case may be. So as I was saying last week, in order for me to even start considering bearish prices, we need to see a change in the state of delivery and a shift in market structure on a daily chart or four hour chart. What is that? Basically, we need to see price close below an up close candle. So let's say this week was the close below this candle, which I don't think is going to happen. If that was to happen, then maybe we can consider um, some bearish prices. We would have to get below mean threshold of this down close candle so this green line would be mean threshold if we close below that on a four hour basis then we can start looking for longer term bearish prices and look for price to get into this imbalance then we have this order block and then we have imbalances down here but that is not what i'm looking for right now i am looking for higher prices on e-mini s p now let's go to a daily chart so monday is this down close candle right here and for this week, we trade it into this fair value gap. So we have this very large buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, very fancy word for a fair value gap. We trade into it. We did not touch the down close candles, but we did touch this high right here. So we touched that, and then we can see the reaction that we had on Thursday, Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were kind of consolidation days, and then we had a rally later in the week. So how high can this market go? You honestly, you have no idea. Um, you can try and run standard deviation. So I can run a standard deviation from here. And why am I picking here is because we ran out buy side, then ran out sell side, went higher. So this is the only breaker formation. And I can run standard deviation. So this will be 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2. We have 2.5. 2.5 tends to be a place that can show some type of resistance. So we can possibly see some type of retracement once we hit this level. This is what I'm looking for for this week. It's for price to hit 51.90 and a quarter. If it doesn't happen this week, maybe it could be next week. We do have NFP coming up this week. So it could wait till Friday to hit that. Um, we'll see how Monday and Tuesday trade. But this is what I'm looking for. So let me. So this target is the target 51.90 and a quarter. That is what we're looking for for the S&P. Let's go to a four hour chart. Like I was saying, look at this chop. We were just chopping a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. So anyone that was trying to buy in this bullish market, they probably put their stop loss here, then here, then here, then here. So they just kept running sell side, sell side, sell side, sell side. And then we finally get the expansion on Thursday's news release. We expand higher, we drop down to this order block, that's called an immediate rebalance. When you have an immediate rebalance, then you can see price start to expand very rapid, like we saw here. So immediate rebalance, we come back up, we come back into this uncle's candle again, and then we expand higher going into the close on Friday. If I drop to a 15 minute chart. So these are the sessions that we have. We have London Blue, New York session, Yellow, pink session is AM session, and the green area is the PM session. So this is just a better view of the week to see that consolidation. And then we finally run out sell side here. During the London session, we come back up. We tap it one more time in the New York session. Then we have the 830 news release, and you can see the rapid expansion creating that buy side BISI, basically, which is a fair value gap. This fair value gap was that four hour order block when we saw the immediate rebalance. So you get to see it better on a smaller time frame, like the 15 minute. We trade back into it. We come higher. These down close candles right here, that is your 
bullish order block. We come back into it with a fair value gap. So that is a high probability order block, which will always be accompanied with some sort of imbalance. So like a fair value gap in this case, we tap it one more time. So if I put a line on the open, so this blue line is the order block open, and we come back into it one more time, and then we rally on Friday going into the close. When you have weeks like this, you usually have a Friday where if you don't get in on the move pretty early, so let's say you don't trade London, you wake up at like 6 a.m., the only time for you to get in this move was either here right at 8.30 or at 9.30 trying to trade the inversion fair value gap right here. That orange box is your inversion fair value gap. So you could have traded it there, creates the order block 930. We come back into it during the opening range, which is from 930 to 1030. And then we trade higher. And if you miss that move, then you're probably not going to get in on this. There was a little retracement here, but honestly, that would be a tough trade because you would be buying at a premium. We are literally at an all time high here. I personally wouldn't trust buying at a premium because I don't know what price can do. It can consolidate. It can completely reverse. I'm not sure. It's Friday, end of the week. So if you didn't get in here looking to target these highs, then you probably missed the move on Friday. But let's move over to bonds. So looking at the weekly chart for bonds, last week I was saying that we could potentially dig a little bit deeper into this fair value gap because we missed it by a little bit. However, that was not the case. We ended up hitting the rejection block, the close of this down close candle. We hit the rejection block on that week and we had a bullish week. So I was wrong on bonds. We did not dig deeper into this fair value gap like I thought because we did come a little bit short on this week. The previous week, I thought that price might want to tap into it and then trade higher. But like I said, that was not the case. So before I go into what happened last week, what do I think? going to happen going forward. Right now, I don't have a clear read on bonds because we did not touch this fair value gap, so it can still come back into it. We have this up-close candle right here. So if I measure out mean threshold of that up-close candle, for me to be bullish, we have to close above this um, dotted green line on a four-hour chart. If we close above it, then I'll be bullish and look for price to go for these highs long term. And we have a volume imbalance right here. That would be my target long term. But until we close above that green line, which is mean threshold of this bearish order block, I will not be looking for bullish prices. So I guess if I had to pick a side of the market, it would be a soft bearish. And the reason why I'm saying soft is one, I have to see the reaction once we get into this up close candle. And because stock indices are bullish, bonds tend to trade in the same direction as stock indices. So because I'm very bullish on stock indices, I'm soft bearish on bonds, which is actually going against the symmetry in the market. But let's go down to a daily chart. So we can see inside that weekly bearish order block, we have some imbalances, which could be good to see it go into the imbalance and then drop the engineered liquidity here. We can drop into it, digging deeper into this order block here, probably mean threshold of that candle. So that dotted green line is what it can dig into if we get the right reaction when we get up in here. So earlier in the week, or maybe for this entire week, because we are opening here, so it could reach, it could take the entire week to get up in here. I guess for this current week, I would be bullish before being bearish, but I would have to see what happens on Monday, Tuesday. Basically, wherever price goes to first, I am the opposite. So if Monday, Tuesday was to trade down, take out this, then I would look for some type of reversal later in the week. NFP sends us up into here and vice versa. If Monday, Tuesday is extremely bullish, then I would look to see Later in the week, do we get some type of reversal pattern? NFP sends us for this sell side liquidity. So we kind of have to see how does the first two days trade. And that's usually how it is with NFP. If you go back into past price action, it's usually a little bit unclear in most markets when we hit NFP because that's like the first week of the month. So new sentiment being set in for the month. And NFP usually is like a Judas swing. 
which basically means that it will trade in the opposite direction of what the entire month should be trading in. But that's pretty much it for bonds. It wasn't too much uh, price action. It was a little bit choppy, just how stock indices were. And then Thursday, Friday was expansion. But that is my thoughts going forward on bonds. Now let's move over to currencies. All right, so this is the weekly chart. And right now we have buy side liquidity here and we have sell side liquidity here. We are still in this range that we have been in since the end of the year. So December to now, we have just been in this choppy range. So like I've been saying, there is no clear read on dollar. However, like guns to my head, if I had to pick something, it would be this buy side liquidity. And once again, that would be trading against the symmetry of the market because the dollar index generally trades in the opposite direction of what stock indices and bonds does. However, it doesn't always do that. Just generally, historically over time, that's what it's done. Um, but there are definitely instances where both can be bullish, both can be bearish. One can consolidate, allowing the other to trade freely. So it's not the end all be all what I'm trying to say. However, the weekly chart, we don't really have too much to go off of. Um, we do have consequent encroachment of this wick. So price shouldn't close above, I mean below it if we are going to be bullish and vice versa. Price shouldn't close above this dotted green line if we're going to be bearish. So I guess you can kind of use those as barometers for a longer term bias. However, I like the scalp, so we're going to drop down to a daily chart. So looking at the daily chart, if I delete these weekly levels real quick, you can see the sell side and the buy side here. And if I zoom out a little bit, I have these boxes, right? If you watched last week's video, I was explaining the market maker and buy model. And I was saying how this could be the smart money reversal. This could be first stage. I mean, this could be the low risk buy. This could be first stage and we could potentially be in second stage accumulation right now. And we can see some rapid expansion for this buy side liquidity here. So that's why I said gun to my head. I would like to see the buy side get taken. However, we are in this fair value gap range and we can completely overcome it trading below the halfway point of this down close candle. And then see that same market maker model, that same structure, just opposite. So within this consolidation, ideally we create some type of imbalance, trade back into it, boom. Maybe we get one more, boom, trade back into it and then go deeper. However, like I said, gun to my head, I still favor this buy side liquidity for this low resistance liquidity run. But the dollar is being very tricky right now. So anything can happen because I saw this happen on Thursday and I was like, oh, here we go. Friday is probably going to be that expansion and we're going to go right through it. However, you can see they are just holding dollar within this range. So we have to see what happens. There's not really too much to go over on the smaller time frames. We just chopped around pretty much the entire week. But as always, if you watch this channel, you know that there are always scalps every single day and I share my trade reviews every single week. Usually I have around two to three that I post a week and it's primarily focused on scalping. And yeah, I hope you guys found this insightful. I know there's not too much going on. The markets are being fickle, so I'm not going to force it and try to make something up just to say it. Um, if you are trading, the only market that's probably somewhat clear is stock indices as we have that bullish target. So if you do get any buy signals with whatever model that you trade, you could probably trust it in stock industries. However, this is not financial advice, and I will see you guys in the next video.